uh, show lined up for you today. But first of all, let's take a look at the, at the latest news. Welcome to the news with Anna and Judy. The UK military pilots have taken a role despite MPs voting against action. Tory MP John Farron said the personnel should be withdrawn as Parliament said no to the military intervention. These troops or individuals should be withdrawn from the embedded programme whilst, he votes, whilst these votes hold sway. While it still holds authority until we vote again, he said. Interest rates have been at 0.5% for six years as the UK economy recovers from the financial crisis. Mark Hanley, the Governor of England, added that shocks to the economy could change the timing and the size of any rate rises. Proceed slowly, he added. Short term interest rates have averaged around 4.5% around the bank's inception centuries, three centuries ago. The government's comments come a day after unemployment rose for the first time in two years. Recently, we interviewed paramedics from the Heart team, Matt Waters and Gemma Penny. Here is the footage. Uh, my name is Matt Waters. I'm the Heart team leader for today's uh, shift. And uh, we're here to re really sort of raise awareness uh, for what Heart is about and, you know, our role within the ambulance service. And so we're just here really to talk about it on, on the Fox show. Um, I'm Gemma Penny. I'm the Watch 2IC or Second in Command. And um, I've been in the unit since it started four, four ish years ago. Heart stands for Hazardous Area Response Team. Uh, and basically, that just means that we now go into places which are more hazardous than the ambulance service have traditionally um, sort of entered. Uh, the heart team's primary role really is just to assist um, the rest of the ambulance service and emergency services generally uh, with just treatment of patients but in more difficult places to reach than traditionally the ambulance service would have would have gone to. The, well the heart, the heart team we, we have uh, specific equipment which helps us to take um, take sort of uh, treatment to the patients which we used to have to wait for fire brigade to bring patients out to us in certain sort of incidents we can now go in and start treating the patients earlier because we can get to trickier to get to places the best part of our job is that we get to do things which are probably a bit more exciting than we were used to in, the, in the, you know the rest of the ambulance service we get to get to do things which involve sort of rope rescue or uh, swift water rescue uh, firearms type type incidents uh, breathing apparatus so we get to do bits of things which we've never done before which traditionally been done by the police or uh, fire brigade or coast guard really. We have um, additional equipment to keep patients warm we have um, additional stretchers that can help us get patients out of trickier situations we've got um, advanced clinical skills um, to normal ambulances um, and we we've got the vehicles and the access requirements to get to those places. So we've got harnesses for the rope work. We've got um, a raft for getting to tricky places in water um, and various PPE to allow us to do that. Polaris is a six-wheel vehicle which we use to get to uh, difficult to reach patients. We use it a lot on Dartmoor, Exmoor, places like that, which um, sort of traditional four by fours, even sort of Land Rovers would, would struggle with. Uh, so we use that and it's just great for getting sort of over really rough terrain uh, and it's also got a stretcher in the back which means we can lay patients flat in it and then take them down to, to the ambulance you know, that's waiting just to convey them to hospital. We ensure that we, we have a debrief before we go home so if it's been a particularly difficult job we make sure that any issues are dealt with before we go home so that that's not, that doesn't have as much an effect on our personal life and psychologically. Yeah, it's, it's very tiring. Uh, you know, shift work, but no more tiring really than, than anyone else who does shift work. Um, but because we have a very close relationship with each other, um, you know, it's, it's a very rewarding, uh, you know, rewarding job and, you know, just it's a good work atmosphere. Sadly, American style graduates for children coming up to primary school have made an appearance in the UK. A nursery in Cambridge has triggered a debate about whether three to four year olds children should go through with that sort of Significant. Mother Goose Nursery in Huntington, Cambridgeshire, participated in the American Style Graduation process previously this week as the phenomenal swept the UK. The nursery has spent the scheme as creating aspirations for children. Their first specialised psychologist, 
<coughs> About a hundred mourners, many dressed up as witches, gathered in Newton to remember Noma Johnson, 56 year old, at a service led by funeral director Brett Newton. Her son Neil Johnson said his mother loved Halloween and would have wanted a party to mark her death. The life of Mrs. Johnson, who died sadly of lung cancer, was remembered to the music country star Doyle Parton. Mrs. Johnson said his mother classed herself as a white witch and was into the tarot reading and those sorts of things. A number of the mourners at Wednesday service donned pointy witch hats while one arrives with film character, Belter Goose from director Tim Burton's 1988 film, Beat the Goose, about the seized couple from their former home. But sadly, Miss Johnson died in June, diagnosed in October of last year. Her husband died in November. And that is today's news. Now shortly we'll be taking a look at Fox's Fox Hill, a brand new Evans, who I saw today, uh, she was a drama, she was a drama teacher, um, and yeah, she was fantastic. She was, and uh, yeah, she was pleased to see me today, so that was, that was really nice. Okay, thank you. Um, now we're coming to the sports report. Sports news with me, Ethan, and me, Jordan. Round two of the Open Championship at St Andrews Play was suspended due to waterlogged course and heavy rain, but hopefully we start up this morning. Dustin Johnson secures open lead in the game and upstages player partner Jordan Spitz by posting a several under par 65 on the first day. And now here's a special football report. Horizon local star Marley Ayton. Hello and welcome to Student Sports News at 7. We are here today at Bishop Fox's school, um, Taunton, Somerset. Year 7, 8, 9 and 10 have been doing football training with Axe the Football Club. Here we have live footage of the boys training at Bishop Fox's AstroTurf. We focus on one sporty student, Marley Oaten. Here's the footage we recorded. and today we're doing Exeter coaching from coaches from Exeter obviously. Tell me about how you got into football. Well, obviously I was brought up playing football as a young kid like most boys but it's just been a big support of my life. Hi well my name's Mr Truby and I'm running a three day uh, Exeter City football activity. I uh, was spending two days in school and our third and final day will be spent at Exeter City uh, football ground playing in the tournament against other schools from Devon so hopefully representing Somerset we're going to win and bring home the trophy. What's your proudest moment in football? In football. My proudest moment of football would probably be scoring my first goal. It's always a nice feeling, but as your first goal, it's going to be a better feeling. Have you enjoyed the day so far? Yeah, it's been really exciting. It's great to see the lads out from the classroom, actually, their normal environment in their uniforms. You've seen them out here actually playing football, having great fun. Um, what does the future hold for you? I don't know yet, because obviously I'm still only young. But maybe want a football career. Mm -hmm. How well would you say Marley has played? Well, Marley's playing really well. Um, we had a sticky start because he forgot to bring his shin pads, so unless he finds them in the next couple of hours, he'll be going in goal for the afternoon. But he's played very, very well, and I think, you know, if Marley shaves his hair off, he could go even quicker on the field. Well, I've been scouted for Taunton District, but I've always supported Liverpool, so I wouldn't mind playing for them. But 
obviously you've got to go through a lot of training and a lot of time and effort to get there. Do you think he has potential to become to have a career in football? Yeah, I think he's got potential. I think all these guys, if they put their mind to it, um, they they've got a lot of potential out here today. And you know, they're being coached by professional coaches. So at the end of the day, if they impress, it's an opportunity for them to progress. Thank you. All right. The best part about football. Best part about football. Having a kick about down the park with your mates. It's always fun. Yeah. Are you very competitive? Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Marley. Thanks. Have a great day. I shall. Liverpool meets the 32.5 million Benteke buyout clause. Aberdeen and West Ham win in Europe. Arsenal want £40 million for Benzema, Man United to bid £42 million for Ramos. And finally to cricket, in the Ashes, Australia start day two on 337-4-1. That includes the sport report today. Thanks for that, Ethan and Jordan. Ben, I heard that you were the captain of the cricket team when you were in school. I was, yeah. I really like cricket. Um, it's a shame to hear England are doing quite badly. But, um, yeah, love cricket and um, loved all sports down, um, here, actually. Played lots of uh, football and tennis and things like that as well. So. What would you say is your favourite sport? Cricket, definitely cricket, yeah. Um, we've got the cancer ground here in Taunton, so I'm often down there watching the cricket as well. So, um, Yeah, my brother plays for Somerset, so it's, it's always good to see him playing as well. Now it's time for a film that we hope will put your smile on your face. But before that, um, our new comedy action film, N N uh, Ninja Nanny. That was Ninja Nanny. That was what, great. Yeah, I thought it was as well. Now it's time to take a look at the live lounge with, and a special interview after. Hello and welcome to the live lounge. This week, I'm going to be interviewing Sam Payne, and he is going to be performing his new song, Stuck To You. I caught up with Sam earlier, and here's what he had to say. Uh, hey, Sam. Thanks for being on the show with us today. Um, how did you get into music? My dad is in a uh, band, a covers band. So he kind of influenced me to get into music, and um, I started playing guitar when I was about eight, probably, something like that. And um, Ever since, I've really enjoyed it, and I've just, you know, got better and better. And it's mainly my dad is, who's influenced me to get into music, really. Yeah. What song did you enjoy recording the most? Um, well, actually, the song I most uh, enjoyed recording was my original song called Stuck To You, which I will perform in a bit. 
it took a long time, um, but with the help of Dave Ledger, it became quite a success in quite a short period of time. It was kind of exciting. My music will be out in the world, well, for the first time. Where do you get your inspiration from? Um, artists like Ed Sheeran, um, Lewis Watson, Ben Howard, John Mayer. Um, people who you know play guitar and sing as well, so mostly acoustic kind of stuff. What was the first song you ever recorded? I recorded a song with Eddie Buck, um, who is an ex-pupil of the school. It was a cover of Be All Right by Justin Bieber. Um, that was the first time I was ever in the studio, um, was with him. H him being a friend kind of, you know, it kind of helped me um, be a little more comfortable. Uh, the first song I ever recorded um, by myself was Give Me Love by Ed Sheeran. Where would you most like to perform? Um, Ed Sheeran just sold out three nights at Wembley Stadium. Um, so I guess that would be good. When did your first single come out? Um, Stuck To You came out about a month ago. Um, it's available on iTunes, uh, Spotify, and all the other digital stores you can buy on. Um, so, yeah, if you do want to buy it and show your support, then feel free. That'd be great, thank you. Yeah. And after everything that's happened, what are your plans for the future? Um... For the future, I'd love to be a recording artist. Um, you know, something to do with music that is, or a sound engineer, or something similar along those lines of, to do with music. So, yeah. Thanks, Sam, for being with us. And right. I understand you're going to perform your new song. Yep. So, introducing Stuck to You by Sam Payne. <laughs> I kept saying what a fool I've been Cause your heart was full of sin And all we do is argue all night And it tore me up I know it's time to move on But I can't get you out my head I wish I could turn my heart off And each time I see your face Memories of you and me come flooding back I need someone to take my heart out Cause I'm still stuck to you Stop. 
times like these I want to hold you Come back and love me, it's not too late It's not too I could turn my heart on Each time I see your face Memories of you and me Come flooding back I need someone to take my heart out Cause I'm still stuck to you That was great. Yeah, it was. We should try and get him in to do it live at one point. Now we're going to take a look at a brand new short film made by the students here at Vicious Fox called Fox Hill. Emily? Yes, sir. Russia? Yes, sir. Jordan? Yes, sir. Tom? Yes, sir. Gemma? Yes, sir. Amy? Yes, sir. Does anybody know where Jack is? No. 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 Lady, lady. Right then. Emily, stop texting. Russia, Amy, get off your phone, otherwise, I'll give you detention. Alright, that's it. Detention. Jordan, stop playing Geometry Dash. It is a rubbish game and we're in maths. Tom, stop calling Gemma. She doesn't like you. Get over it. Gemma, get back in your seat right now. Jack, nice you to join us. So today we're doing a test. Mm. Oh. You'll have 45 minutes to do your test. No phone, Amy. Speech. Jack. You have 45 minutes to complete this exam. Your time starts now. Rochelle, well, I've already told you. No need to was funny. Now let's turn the hand over to our special guest, Ben. Hi. Hi Ben, how are you? Very good, thank you. Good. What kind of things did you do here at Bishop's Fox? Uh, well, I uh, made a lot of friends. Um, still in touch with quite a few people from Bishop's Fox, so that's nice. And uh, I played a lot of sport. I was in a, some drama productions. Um, and yeah, and I did alright in my GC GCSEs as well. So. Yeah, cool. Um, so tell me about what you've been up to once you've left um, Bishop's Fox. Uh, since leaving, I've been to Richard Hewish College. Um, to do my A levels there, uh, so that was that was good, and then um, and then I went away travelling for a, for a year, um, 
which was amazing, uh, great fun. And then I've just finished my first year at Newcastle University, um, which again was very enjoyable. So yeah, I've had a good time since, since leaving. Um, what else have you been up to at university? Uh, I've been in a couple of productions, so I've kept sort of my passion for drama going. Um, yeah, I've been in two productions this year alongside um, my degree. So that's just been like, yeah, a really nice antidote to the work and um, met lots of people through that. Um, but yeah, there's so many opportunities at university uh, alongside kind of your studying. So. Yeah. Would you recommend going out um, travelling for a year? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, to everyone. Um, I mean, you know, you've got to do a bit of hard work. Uh, so when I left college, I worked in a, a restaurant for sort of five or six months and just saved everything that I got, and then um, and then you've got the money to go away, and, and then yeah, so you should make the most of it if you can. Um, yeah, there's a lot to see and um, lots of fun to be had. So yeah. When you were in school, what would you say was your favourite subject? That's tricky. I'd say drama was one of my favourite subjects because, like I said, I got got on really well with the teacher, um, and yeah, I really liked the subject. Also, um, really like PE. Um, yeah, I like getting out on the field and kind of playing different sports and stuff. And, and really thought I like like the PE team here as well, so that's good. How would you compare uni to school and college? Uh, good question. It's it's very different. It's, it requires you to do a lot more kind of independent work, thinking of yourself, and obviously the experience of living away from home. So I'm up in Newcastle, which is about 300 miles away from here. So um, so I can't just come home at the weekend. You know, I've got to do all my washing and all my cooking and things like that. So obviously it's very different in that way. Um, also, uh, in terms of the learning, you know, you don't get just given stuff, so you kind of have to work it out for yourself. Um, so it's, yeah, it's different in that way. It's also more expensive, so, um, yeah. Um, but yeah. yeah. Thank you very much. No worries, thank you. Thank you. That was a great interview. Thanks to Ben. Now we're over to... Over. Op Operation Billy Boy. Our target, Mr. Nusselowen's lovable badger. What we have to do is from, go from here to our goal, which is here.
So, what detentions shall we give? I don't know how they managed to get Mr. Nut alone to do that. <laughs> People have worked so hard on some really great films. And speaking of films, we have the latest film reviews. And today we will be talking about the recent re-released reboot slash sequel type thing of Mad Max, which is the critically acclaimed Mad Max Fury Road. So, first thing first, Sally, do you like this movie? I did like this movie, actually. First things first, this is an action film, so what did you think yeah. of sort of the action? I, I personally loved it. The, the action was good. I was really pleased um, that there was a lot more um, women in it than there were in the first films. They seemed to have a much more central role. I thought they kicked butt. Can I say kicked ass in this one? Okay. Yeah. They kicked ass really well. I, was re I love Charlie, Charlize Charlie Theron's Charlie. character. She was really good. Um, so yeah, so all of that I really enjoyed. But I think this one is, it was basically perfect. I think this is possibly the best action movie that I've seen <gasps> since The Dark Knight, I want to say. Oh, I see, I love The Dark Knight. That's a big claim. That is, That's that a is, very big it's, claim. It's, it's, it's almost at that level. Ooh. It's very, but I do, it's my favourite movie of the last couple of years, for sure. It's really? Wow. No, it's not, it's, it's not even in my top ten. How do you think this compares to sort of other like action movies and movies in general in the cinema at the moment and in the past few months? I lost a bit of love for the action genre, not because I don't enjoy them like everything we've been talking about, but because uh, they seem to have gone to um, the spectacle for the spectacle's sake. So it's all about the visual effects, all about the visual experience and not really about the story. So they're not really paying so much attention to character development, uh, plot lines, uh, cl complications within the pot like plot lines, um, implied meanings, so there's very little layering of, of meaning and suggestion within the storyline. And that for me is a massive loss. What? You have one night to go see a movie with your friends. Right now, what do you see? You can go with five friends and get slightly drunk and this is a perfect film for that kind of evening. Yeah. Hello, today I am with Wojciech and we will be discussing Insidious Chapter 1. Um, Wojciech doesn't think it's a good movie, he's a bit sceptical about it, but I, however, think it is an amazing movie. Look, I, 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 I don't watch movies I don't like. I saw the trailer of me, I saw like all the trailers of this movie, there's like five or ten of them, there's a lot of them. There's a lot of marketing for this movie, there's a lot of hype around it, right? And I saw it, I saw the first trailer that comes out, Bunch of jump cups, some disturbing, like, weird-ass faces, like, blood coming out of them, it's like, like creepy-ass handprints, this weird child's, like, what? And, like, pff, makes no sense, I don't like it. So it's it's a different kind of... kind of way of explaining things. Like, horror movies are supposed to be dark and gloomy and sad. And Why is it a very good movie? So let me show you what I mean. I know someone who can help her. We took Trifield and EMF readings of the whole house, wiring, alarm clocks. I don't think bad wiring is the problem here. I want to leave. I want to leave this house. <laughs> what is it? I can't say the movie is bad, but you know what? I ain't going to watch it because it looks pretty damn bad. Hello, welcome to our film review. We're on the Lego movie. I am here with Katie. And have you seen the uh, Lego movie before? I haven't seen it, but I'm really interested in how a film like the Lego Movie manages to attract such a wide adult audience. It's got a lot of innuendos that probably children wouldn't realise were there, so I think that's probably why it attracts a, an adult audience more than it probably seems as though it would. 
but it, it, it attracts both because of, of its childish nature being Lego. How are the characters relatable to your average audience? Mainly at the younger kids, basically. The main the characters are quite jumpy. They use a lot of words that a kid would find pretty awesome. So like awesome and cool and neat. You quite a few examples. So have you got any of those you'd like to show us from uh, the film? Okay. Yeah, I can do that. All right, brilliant. All right. Person to lead us. And you are right. <laughs> A house divided against itself would be better than this. Abraham Lincoln! I'm not the special. I'm just a regular, normal guy. You have the ability to be the special because I believe in you. Robots, destroy him! Aloha, loser! We're winning. It's a bad part. From... From films to filmmakers, here is our very own film about the filmmaker Sarah Cook. Hello, my name is Sarah Cook and I really enjoy making films. Ever since I was young, I've always found films really inspiring and they've had such an impact on who I am as a person and telling a story and trying to get a message across to people. The first films I made, um, I made when I was about eight or nine, I think, and I always used to um, take films of the different places that I went to. Whenever I went on a trip or if I went somewhere with my family, I would always take my camera with me and I'd make a little video or a little montage of my travels and that's pretty much where I started off and I still do that but I've moved on to making films with actors and things now and I really enjoy it. The film I'm currently working on is a film called Terror on Fox's Drive. Um, I'm directing it along with a friend of mine called Giles who's producing and uh, who wrote it and it's basically like a, a horror movie but it's got a bit of a twist in it. It's definitely a mix of genres and I think it will appeal to many people. It, um, I've definitely come a long way since I first started making that film, and it's, it's been a really fun learning experience. If filmmaking's your passion, you should definitely just get a camera and start working at it, because I think you definitely learn more on the job. It's, um, f learning to make films is definitely a long process, but it's all about practicing you can't really learn it from just reading. I mean, that helps, but I think definitely just get a few friends together, have some fun, and throw something together, and just have as much fun with it as you can. It's going to be released on my YouTube channel, and you should definitely check it out when it comes out, because it's going to be really good. It should be released sometime in September, after the summer holidays. So what do you think of that, Ben? Well, it was pretty scary, wasn't it? I mean, um, but no, it looked like an amazing film for such a young, young person to be making. So, um, yeah, what yeah. to look out for. Fox. Yeah. Foxes can produce some really good filmmakers and students. And From films to documentaries, uh, here is CSI and Bishop Foxes. However, in a 
the news just in, police are continuing to interview several murder suspects in the case of Rebecca Boyle. Rebecca was most cruelly murdered at a school in Taunton, Somerset. Police are conducting house-to-house -house inquiries and tape recorded interviews to find the culprit. Police have revealed that during one interview, Graham Jones has admitted he still loves Ben. Police have indicated that further information will be released shortly. The video is about Channel 4 News broadcasting about the murder of Becky Boyle. It's not real, I wouldn't say. It's more like it's mouthed over, but it gives us a nice backstory and more, more evidence to convict the person we want to convict. We've been using microscopes to, to test for like um, the fibres, to match up fibres, on because there are fibres on the victim, and so the murderer had this, this fibre on them, so we've been using the microscopes. We've used weighing machines, scales, microscopes, slides. We've also been using um, spotting tiles and iodine to test for um, starch, protein, sugar and poison in stomach contents and um, biscuits because the murder, the murder victim was found with a half-eaten biscuit. My favourite part of the activity is sort of like doing the tests. Well, we've been working as a team, learning how to work as a team and um, learning more about testing in other blood and what sugar levels are about. And we've also learnt how to test blood for drugs because that was one of the activities. We've been, we've been using these sort of scale things and if, if the blood was heavier than um, 1.10 grams, it, the, the blood had been drugged. I think the hardest part is um, doing the stomach acid and tests because it really smells and it's really hard not to throw up and whilst you're standing there some people have to like move away and stuff. Well the white suits are actually um, for the it helps with the feel of the day and but in real life they are used for like biohazards and they're used in a lot of labs around the country. They're used to not contaminate evidence. I think it's a um, joint murder between two siblings because Sarah Gilmore and Celia Gilmore. Sarah wrote the note and Celia was found with the fibres and the biscuit and the um, other materials that were used during the murder. Me and my group have a slightly unusual feeling about who it might be. So we think it will be, it all includes about four people. So, um, that drugs have been involved and that it's probably quite a gruesome murder. <laughs> um, I think it could be Sarah Gilmore. It all points to her, the footprints, the DNA, all that. Don't you think? Yeah, I agree. Yeah, it's been quite fun because you've got to go and look into totally different things that you haven't necessarily done before. So, like, chromographs and searching for stuff and finding out who killed someone. It's intriguing. We all love a bit of reality TV. I'm a celeb as a particular favourite of mine. What about yours, Ben? What's your favourite TV show? Well, I think everyone's... It's, it's a guilty pleasure for everyone, probably. Um, so, yeah, I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Here is our very own remake. Hello and welcome to I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here. you got to like put your back into it. Oh my <laughs> day! It's a no for me! Not that oh, hard, Gordon. Yeah. You're meant to be a world famous cook Trying. and you can't even light a fire. So Victoria Beckham, <laughs> how on earth did you end up in the jungle? My husband. He's just getting too big for his boots, it was really annoying me. Oh, oh I'm starving. You haven't eaten for ages. Hey! <laughs> my experience in the jungle was really wild. I couldn't get on with Simon Cow because he was too stuck up for me. He kept going on how he was a good chef, but he couldn't find any berries to make us a meal. We couldn't even light the fire in there, let alone cook anything. Yeah, I thought the task I did was easy, but once I got up the tree, yeah, it started to wobble a bit and I fell off, and I lost all of the studs for our team, so we didn't eat anyway. I'm so annoyed with Rooney for losing that last task. He didn't get any food. Yeah, we could have been eating right now if he was competent. I'm starving. Simon Cow, how did you end up here? <laughs> <laughs> well, 
It was a long story. The fact is, I'm in it for the money. That's it. I've had a decent meal. I'm pretty ages. sure I saw a Tesco's down there. <laughs> You're hallucinating. <laughs> so as we can see now, it has been difficult for the contestants. You can see them struggling day by day. God. Where have you been? Funny us food. No one else is going to go. We're all going to die here. That's all we're going to do. Oh, this experience in the jungle is horrible. I mean, my hair is so greasy. Oh, and my clothes are ugh, all manky and horrible. That... Gordon Ramsay he thinks he's so good at cooking, but can't get a fire started. I think everyone gave Gordon Ramsay a bit of a hard time. Like, it's kind of hard to start a fire when it's soaking wet, like it always is in this jungle. Oh, God. Yeah, but overall, I think everyone was pretty good sport, apart from Wayne Rooney failing at everything that was given to him. Glad he got evicted, yeah. My feet are soaking. Oh, you know what? I'm starting to think that David is better than this. Should I go back some food? Yes. You're a chef. Go on then. You see in a bit? That's bad. Yeah, don't pull the fire yeah. down. Cut the task. <gasps> oh, cut the task. What is it? <laughs> Rummage through a bunch of horrible things and find a star. And now we see another task being distributed to Gordon Ramsay. Stupid. Come on. Got the stars. Here's a sneak peek of what's coming up next week. I'm I'm a celebrity. Get me out of here. Looks very damp and dismal outside. Let's have a look at. Uh, Let's have a look at the weather forecast with uh, Lily Mount Stevens and Tom Turner. Today in Taunton it will be raining. Ah, oh, what a lovely summer we are having. The rainfall is due to be less than normal for this time of year. Yes, Lily, that's true. Around 20 centimetres over the next two weeks. On a good note, we are having special offers for you from Barber and Hunter Wellies. In Bridgewater, it will be cloudy, moving into rain this afternoon. Rain, rain, rain. High winds are expected from Minehead, bringing more rain into the villages on the Quantocks. And rain is expected to fill up the levels like a giant bathtub. On a positive note, we expect sun by the weekend. Better put on shorts and a t-shirt today, as we will be having a lot of rain. Look at all the Taunton people with smiles on their faces, enjoying this beautiful weather. Wellies with shorts, a look like the rest of Europe cannot pull off. Unless you're in Scotland or Ireland. So, to summarise, expect rain and wind. Enjoy the frizzy hair, wet socks and shivering in July. Have fun jumping in puddles. Goodbye from me. And goodbye from the sun. Thank you very much. Um, so, what are your plans for the future? Well, I'm doing my law degree at the moment, and that's going well, but also doing my drama, and so, yeah, I've got lots of options. Um, so, who knows? Like, like uh, that lad Marley said, I, I'm young, I don't know. <laughs> but, um, but we'll see, yeah. yeah. That's it for the, uh, the Fox show today. Thank you for joining, and hope you enjoyed all of our films. A special thanks to Ben for being here. No worries, please. And... Thank you for the viewers. But from us and the rest of the team, goodbye.